when it comes to SEO, literally the most powerful free tool is Google Search Console. And I get asked questions every single day about how to use it. So in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through how to use Google Search Console and the key areas that I feel you should be focusing on in order to help you make decisions when it comes to SEO. So getting straight into it, Google Search Console is essentially Google's native platform that allows you to first of all, tell Google that you're ready to show up on search engines, but it's also where you'll see all of the data around how you're ranking on Google, where you're getting clicks from, how your pages are doing, et cetera, et cetera. So as you can see here, this is a dashboard. You get an overview of your performance, so how many clicks you're getting. Then it shows indexing, and indexing basically means whether you're indexed or not. And index just means you're showing up on search engines. So 79 index pages means that on this website, my travel blog, 79 of the pages are showing up on Google. And 94 not index just means that 94 of the pages on my website are not showing up on search engines, which is something that we'll be touching upon in a second. Then going down to experience, this basically shows if you've got any pages that have bad core web vitals, which is basically page loading speed. So if you've got any pages which load really poorly, they're going to show here. You can see that I've got 66 pool pages for mobile and then and then enhancements will basically tell us if we've got any invalid schema on the website and schema is just the type of language basically. Going down a little bit further before I show you the details probably the first thing that I actually want you to do once you've set up Google Search Console is head over to sitemaps and sitemaps is basically where you can submit your sitemap to Google. A sitemap is basically a map of all the pages on your website and it essentially is a map that allows Google to see what pages you have so that you can show up properly on search engines. So before you get started, I want you to make sure that you submit this sitemap to Google. Now, depending upon the website builder you use, it's going to be a little bit different. For Squarespace, all you have to do is type in sitemap.xml. If you've got WordPress, it'll be a little bit different. Just Google for the website builder you run, how to submit sitemap to Google Search Console. It's just super, super easy. But this, again, is going to tell Google that you ready to be displayed. So then just moving over to URL inspection, this essentially just allows you to put any web page of the website that you've selected in this search bar. And when you inspect it, Google Search Console is going to tell you whether or not the page that you've entered is on Google or not. If it's not on Google, you can press request indexing, which will essentially tell Google, hey, please manually go through this web page and display it on search engines. Now, we're just going to cancel now because this web page is already indexed url inspection is super important because if you've got pages that always here you're not able to get it to index what i want you to do is head over to here inspect it in the search bar and then press test live url and just like our request indexing actually gets google to go through the page and display it on search engines what testing the live url does it gets google's own tool that decides whether websites are indexed or not to go through the url and see if there's anything wrong that is stopping it from being being indexed. So this is super important because often you've probably got pages on your website which aren't indexing and it's really, really frustrating. But if you go through this and you test the live URL, you're going to learn what is holding it back. And in this case, you can see URL is available to Google. And if your web page wasn't available to Google or there was a problem, this would be read and it would tell you what is wrong. So again, super, super helpful. So if you are having any problems, head over to that. So you know how to submit your sitemap, you know how to inspect your URL and the different options available to you. I'm now going to take you over to search results. And search results, I mentioned earlier that Google Search Console has all the data. Essentially what search results does, it shows you how many clicks you're getting in any given period, it shows you how many impressions you're getting, which is when someone sees you on search results but doesn't click on you. It gives you your average click-through rate, so the percentage likelihood if someone sees you, they're likely to click on you. And then finally, the average position. So on average, where do you rank on Google for any period? You can either filter it down to the search term, the page, the country, etc. Super, super powerful. And when we scroll down, we're actually then able to see, so this is for the past three months, this website has got 41.6 thousand clicks. I'm then able to go down and see which search terms I've actually got these clicks for. So this is my travel blog. You can see here that in the past three months, we've got 783 clicks for the search term, how to chat for your crush. I can even go here and 
click average position and you can see there it's showing us that the average position for this search term is number two so if i just go over to google you can see here that we're actually positioned one here so obviously it is an average position and you can see here this is actually a little widget as long as you're logged into the account on google that you have access to the google search console you're actually going to see this widget and when we see in the last seven days it actually says that we're on average position one so obviously we're last three months here so it's a little bit off because obviously it's more historical data but when we scroll down we can actually see all the other queries that we're actually getting searches for which again is super super powerful because we can filter by clicks impressions position which allows us to get an extra level of data and understanding when it comes to our website even able to go through pages so we can see which are the best performing pages on the website we can go to countries devices etc this is going to give you the complete understanding of how your website is ranking on Google. And just before I take you to the next sections on Google Search Console, I'm going to show you probably what is one of the most powerful areas when it actually comes to understanding how your website is ranking over time and if you need to do anything in order to improve your website. And that is actually the comparison feature. So we're going to go over to date here and then we're going to go to compare. And when I click compare, what it's going to allow me to do is compare any period to the previous period. So for example, if we go to the last six months, we go to the last three months compared to the previous period and then press apply. It's going to automatically compare the last three months to the previous three months. So again, what that allows us to do is compare how we're doing over time to see how our SEO efforts are performing. This is also super important because obviously Google's algorithms are constantly changing. And what this actually allows you to do is allows you to see on a search term by search term basis, how you're changing and a page by page basis. So if for some reason you notice that your clicks are down on a given month, you're able to come here compared to the previous month or compared to the previous period and see exactly what is going on. So for example, when I scroll down here, I can actually see all of the search terms, the clicks in the past three months, the impressions in the past three months, and then the previous period. And when I click to clicks difference, what it actually shows me now is the difference in clicks that I've got in the past three months, in this case, to the previous three months, which again is super important because it allows me to understand how my website is changing on search engines. Now, I actually have an extension installed called Keywords Everywhere, and that's actually why I'm getting this data here around how many search terms these search queries get per month. And actually quite interesting to this, and the reason why I'd recommend installing it, it's literally $10 a month. You can see here that I've lost 134 clicks in the past three months compared to the previous three months for the search term, how to chat with your crush. Now, of course, it is a travel blog, so don't judge me here. But I, actually, I can see that over this period, the search term has actually reduced. So again, this gives me an understanding. I may or may not have lost search engine rankings for this. To tell, I can just go to average position and I can actually see whether the search engine position has changed, which actually I've increased search engine position in the past three months. But the reason why I've actually lost clicks is actually because the trend of the amount of people searching for this term has reduced over time. So again, this allows us to get a really good understanding by a search term on a search term by search term basis. So again, just allow us to understand what exactly is going on. And because we can do it for search terms, we can actually do it for pages as well. So again, I'm still on compare here. So I'm comparing the last three months to the previous three months. I can filter it by clicks difference. And as you can see here, I've actually can see that this page in the past three months has lost 2.6 thousand clicks, which is a significant number of clicks. Don't get me wrong. And what Google Search Console is actually going to allow us to do is figure out why we have lost search engine rankings because actually as I can see here my average position has actually got better I've gone from an average of 7.9 to 7.3 so again I'm wondering well why have I lost clicks then if I've actually gone up on search engine rankings my position has improved why have I lost clicks and one of the really neat features that I like in Google search console if you actually click on the page it even works on a query if you click a query or you click a page it's going to filter the results that you see on this web page by the page or query that you've selected so because I've filtered it down to that page that I was just hovering over, what I'm able to see is a graph of the clicks, impressions, average position for this page. And again, what's really neat if I head over to queries, what I'm then able to see is the search terms that this page ranks for and how it has changed over time. So if you have a page that for some reason is getting less clicks, what you're able to do is go over here and filter down that page so you can see exactly the search terms and how they've changed over time, which again, is going to get you an understanding, you know, has your search engine rankings changed? Using keywords everywhere, you're also
course able to see if it's just down to change in search behavior on search engines you're able to see if you know positions have changed whatever it is you're able to diagnose it you're able to look into the data and because you're able to do this on a page by page basis you're also able to do this on a query by query basis so right now we've filtered by page what i can actually do now is filter by clicks so what i'm going to do I'm actually going to go to the highest performing click that I have, how to chat with your crush and click on this. And what this is going to show me is going to show me how this search query has been performing over the past however long. And again, because I'm comparing, I can see that this has actually reduced in the past three months compared to the previous period. And then when I go over to pages, I'm able to see what pages on Google am I getting clicks and impressions for this search term, which again is super, super powerful because when I actually remove compare and go just to filter i'm able to see all of the pages for this search term that is getting clicks and impressions and that's actually the next thing that i'm going to move over to with google search console because it allows you to see if you've got keyword cannibalization and keyword cannibalization is when you have two or more pages competing for the same search term because we're able to filter your website down to a specific search term and go over to pages it's going to allow you to see if you've got two or more pages on your website that are getting clicks or a significant significant number of impressions for the same search term. Now, obviously I've filtered it down to how to chat with your crush. And I go across the here, I can see that there's a couple of other pages getting impressions for this search term. However, it's in comparison to this, there's no clicks and it's very little impressions. So I don't have keyword cannibalization for this specific search term, which again gives me peace of mind. And because this tool has data coming directly from Google, what it allows me to do, as I've already mentioned, sorry for banging the drum, it essentially gives me confidence and know that I'm doing the right thing and gives me the data in order to inform the strategy that I'm applying. So now we've covered search results. What I'm now going to do is go over to pages and we're going to get a little bit more technical now. So please bear with me. What this is actually going to do, you remember we mentioned earlier about not index pages. What this is going to do, it's actually going to allow us to figure out why certain pages aren't indexed. So for example here, this breaks down why all the pages aren't indexed and it shows you page by page the reason. So for example, crawled currently not indexed means that Google has crawled the pages but has decided not to index it. So you can see here's a couple of blogs here which for some reason haven't been indexed. This doesn't really look like a page and this looks like a test page so I should probably just go in and delete it. Going back to page indexing you can see a number of different reasons and to be honest I'm not going to go through reason by reason for why these aren't indexed. When you do this for yourself and you go over all you really need to do is go over to Google, copy the reason and you're going to see a website on Google that's going to explain explain exactly what that reason is. So, and to be honest, a lot of the time you don't really need to worry. For example, this is just an issue with Squarespace. It is actually quite common that isn't going to be holding you back. Things like not found though, are definitely something that you need to look into because this is essentially means that there's a broken link. And what I would need to do in this case, I would need to create a 301 redirect from this page to the proper page. In this example, I just know that I changed the URL to remove the 2022 because I updated it to a 2024 guide. So what this allows you to do is essentially pick up things that you might've done wrong. This is something in my case that I just didn't add a 301 redirect or essentially things that you need to do in order to get more pages shown up on Google, as well as obviously all the data that I've already shown you. So now we've gone through pages and indexing. What I'm now gonna take you through is removals. And removals is essentially a place where you can tell Google to remove certain pages from search engines. Now, of course, there's many different ways that you might want to do this. This, for example, is a temporary removal. So if you want to urgently remove a page from Google search, so for example, maybe you accidentally published a page, it's now showing on Google and you want to quickly remove it, but you don't want to do it permanently. This temporary removal page allows you to do exactly that. You just press new request. It's going to take you over to this and it allows you to temporarily remove the URL. You can also go through and do outdated content. So let's say, for example, you've got outdated content that you've now updated and you want to remove that outdated content. Let's say, for example, you had a terms of conditions for 2023 and you've now got your 2024 version. You could go through to here and you could submit outdated content that you want to be removed. So again, this is probably a page that you're probably not going to use unless you really need it. However, when you do need it, you now know exactly where to come to. Then we're just going to go over to the experience section we're going to go through this a little bit quicker but this essentially tells you whether you have pages that need improvement for core web vitals so 
mobile. So essentially page speed. And all I need to do is click here. And this is going to show me all the pages on my website, which aren't considered good, i.e. need to be improved when it comes to Core Web Vitals, which is basically just Google's page speed. And again, just like the pages up here, all I need to do is click on the reason that's showing up. And again, if you don't understand what this means, all I recommend is you just go over to Google, copy it in, and it's going to tell you. In fact, here you've even got an article from Google telling you how to resolve this. So again, this is just super helpful when it comes to actually figuring out if you've got any pages which need to be sped up, have got bad page speed experience. And in particular here, you want to focus on mobile because Google has actually increased the importance when it comes to mobile page performance. So definitely head over to mobile here and see if there's anything you need to improve on. And again, Cool Web Vitals and HTTPS are just subsections of this main page. Now what I'm going to do, I'm now just going to go over to manual actions. This is if basically if Google ever detects a problem with your website, if you get penalized, if you bought spammy backlinks, you're going to see it come up here. If you ever have any security issues, it's going to come up here. And then the final area that I'm going to go into is actually the links section here. And this is actually a really underutilized area of Google Search Console. And what it allows you to do is get an understanding of all the links that you have coming to your website. So you don't don't need to use a tool like Ahrefs to see the backlinks that you have. It also allows you to get an understanding of the internal linking structure on your website. So yeah, a lot of people that I speak to don't actually know that you don't need to pay for a tool in order to see the backlinks that you have. And you can actually get a really good understanding of the internal links on your website through this tool. For example, here I can see the top link pages. So I can go here and I can actually see all the top pages on my website that have backlinks going to them. So for example, I can go over to my home page, click on this, and this shows me all the sites that have links through to this website. So for example, I can see that the Substack, there's different pages which link through to my home page. There's even the Daily Mail, for example, because my travel blog got featured in the Daily Mail. Going back to the main links page, you can see here that this shows me the top pages that have internal links going to them. So this basically shows me that I have 85 internal links from pages on my website to this page and again it just allows us to get a really good understanding because this is important when it comes to page hierarchy it's super important that when you go through your website you have your most important pages that have a lot of internal links going to them because when google goes through this it's going to look at these pages that have the most internal links and assume that you've linked to them because those are important pages on your website it's one of the reasons that often on google search engines for example if i type in seo space it's one of the reasons that these pages Pages will show up in Google search engine results because these are the pages that have the most internal links going to them on your website. So if for some reason you're getting frustrated that you're not getting these pages show up under the main homepage on your website, it's probably because you don't have enough internal links going to them. And if you want to see how many internal links you have going to them, you just got to go over to links, internal links and see your top links pages. And again, that's going to allow you to come up with an action plan in order to solve the issue of your website. And then just scrolling down, just to finish up, you can see here, this is top linking text. So this essentially is going to see the anchor text. So for example, when you link from a web page to one website or another web page, the link text is the anchor text. And the anchor text is super important because Google looks at that as an indicator of what you should rank for. So for example, if my blog wants to rank for couples travel blog and I have backlinks and internal links that go to my homepage, page that I want to rank for that, that have the exact keyword couples travel blog or variations that's going to be an indicator to google that i should rank for that keyword and again what becomes super powerful when i go over to links i can see my top linking text this just allows you to see the top linking text to you your different pages. So there you are, guys. That is a complete run through of Google Search Console. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments. Hopefully this has given you a really good understanding of the main different pages that you need to go to. There are some areas that I haven't gone to, such as settings. For example, here, you can actually see if you want really want to get nerdy, how often Google is going through your website. But to be honest, most people really don't need to understand this. So I'm going to leave that for another video or someone more technical than me to go through it but thanks a lot guys for watching to this video if you have got to this point feel free to subscribe to the youtube channel if you want to get more tips of how to get seo results and hopefully i'll see you in the next video